Good afternoon, Nerd Fam, and welcome back to Salt Lake City, Utah, where we are halfway through day two of our three days of coverage here on theCUBE at KubeCon North America. Very exciting show so far. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by the one and only Rob Streche. Rob, today's flying by. Today is. I'm on a Rocky Mountain High. It's you awesome. You have been on it's, a little bit of a Rocky great. Mountain High yeah, this, and I, this and, trip. And I, I think, again, this, this <laughs> continues to roll with things that's really important for people out that haven't maybe engaged with Kubernetes. Again, with 50% of the people being new, their first KubeCon. This next topic is, I think, one of the, if, if they check nothing else out, they should be checking out where this came from and how this all, because it will make their life so much easier. Yeah, speaking of make our, making our lives easier, our two next guests make our lives easier on the desk every time. Kevin and Ignacio, thank you so much for coming to hang out with us again. Our thank pleasure, you. thank you so much for having us. Yeah. It's always a little bit of a party when we get to hang out, and <laughs> I selfishly really look forward to these segments. So, thank you for taking the time. I love that we get to focus on the developers for the next few minutes. What's been going on since the last time I saw you guys? Let's start there and then talk about what's going on now. Okay, maybe I can start. Uh, Last time we talked, mainly we were putting all the focus on developer productivity. You remember right. that? Of okay. course. The inner loop, the outer loop. Now we have evolved AI, security, connectivity, everything now is connected. So we are starting to move the conversation within developers because Podman Desktop, we have now Podman Desktop, that was the starting point for that conversation. And now Podman Desktop have Podman Desktop AI Lab. That is, how to test your models, the LLMs, inside your own machine. So that is evolving. At the same time, we have Developer Hub that is also evolving. That is, how you enable new developers to come. Then security, the last time we talked, we still don't have the product in GA. You remember okay. that? I yeah. do. Now, the product is in full GA, so we have customers already. And then we are starting to talk about connectivity with Connectivity Link because the new world is more and more multi-cloud, multi-service, so you need to have all those apps connected across clouds, across services, so those four areas is what basically we are talking about here at the booth, that is, it's not only productivity, but is what is coming next, what is critical for developers. Yeah, and I think the main goal also is make sure developers are happy with, with everything, right? And yeah. making, making it relatively easy for them to use, um, because it's really fascinating. You walk through all the, the, the different stands and the different projects, like holy moly, there's so many projects, it's so overwhelming. And there's a lot of really cool projects for developers too, but like how do you actually use those, right? So we're trying to like make opinionated choices, bring some of those projects together to actually be able to use them without being like experts in security or expert in AI or expert in platform engineering yeah. and yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's why I'm always excited to talk to you guys because for me, it's how do you give the infrastructure people the stuff, the kit to make their, you know, kind of top off their stack, put the icing on the cake yes. so that they can interface with their customers, which are the developers and now more and more the data scientists and data engineers yeah. who are doing the AI. How have you seen it evolve, especially with AI coming into the picture yeah. in the past year? Uh, has been, honestly, has been a bit of a mess in the sense that it's a bit overwhelming. You remember that we were talking about the cognitive love last time we talked? Yes, we were. Yeah, 75% of developers are struggling with the cognitive love. I use that fact all the time, thank you, by the way, yeah. for giving me yeah. that and, and this yeah. was before the whole kind of AI exactly. explosion, yeah, exactly. right? Oh, without. I know, this was back in Amsterdam, exactly. I think we were talking about that. And this was yeah. without AI. Yeah. So I was like, okay, and now what we are talking, this is our recent pitches is, guys, hugging face. You need to start looking into hugging face. Do you know how many models do you have in hugging face? Over Thousands. a million. I was going to oh, say, wow. I was, I was going to guess a million. million I was going to say multi-hundred thousands. Exactly. But yes, yeah. Over a million models. That is wild. Can you believe that's happened that fast? Yeah. Just as right. a sidebar, yeah. that's insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you are a developer, and what do you do? <laughs> how you are going to pick the right model? How you are going to pick the right version of that model? That's impossible. Exactly. Yeah. So and how do you use it? I mean, you couldn't yeah. even read and understand what each one of those models were all at right. once over the course of a year, probably. Yeah. I mean, that's insane to think about that. Yeah. And not to talk the cost of those models, of using those models, not to talk about 
if that model is legally usable in your country, in your region or not. Great point. Can you trace the information that is part of that model? So the level of complexity is evolving like no one. So, so how, do you, how do you see what you guys are providing to customers and the community is providing to customers really breaking down that complexity? I mean, I, I, again, talked about Podman and Podman yeah. Desktop, love that it runs on a Mac, love all of that, but you also have Instruct Lab and other pieces of tech that help break down that complexity. Right, yeah, exactly. I mean, because there's not just one type of developer, right? So we need to like meet data scientists, which are also kind of developers. We have platform engineers that are kind of developers. We have the, you know, the classic application developers. So that's why you know, we're investing in different areas. On the one hand, like, okay, how do we provide a platform for these data scientists to be productive? How do they, because, okay, they know how to train this data and create these models, but then how do you operationalize them, right? So we have OpenShift AI and everything that goes around that. But then we have the, the traditional application developer that's like, yeah, you need to use this model. Okay, cool. <laughs> how? Yeah. Um, so a lot of developers, they want to play around with models but don't know how. Like, do we go to ChatGPT? And it's like, no, because we don't know what it's trained on necessarily. A lot of organizations say, like, you cannot use yeah. those kinds of models. Uh, here's a model that you can use. How, where do we run this? You know, we'd like to run it on our local machine because we developers, we like to do everything local. So we have, for example, Podman AI Lab where you can just you know, run uh, a model on your local machine. Um, then Instruct Lab, which is really interesting to train models without like, being deep experts into these technologies. Um, so it kind of goes, spans uh, the whole spectrum, even for like Java developers. Uh, we're investing in, you know, like Quarkus as a, as a Java stack, where you have really smooth integration with Langchain for J into models and integrating AI into, you know, really traditional uh, Java applications. So really, kind of yeah. try to cover a lot of ground. If you recall, also since the last time we talked, we have also Rel AI. We introduced Rel AI at Summit. Yeah. That is, you put together, you have Rel AI, you put together the granite models, you put together the Instruct Lab in order to do the fine tuning on those models, and then you put all the drivers and infrastructure that you need. So that is the whole package. It's a great starting package for people that don't know how to start, which are the right models. Rel AI is the solution yeah. for that. So, and we present that at Summit, and we have great adoption on that. So we expect, and also, Granite, you know, with IBM, we are investing a lot on Granite models. Mm -hmm. It's giving us a great of infrastructure. There is another concept that is critical, that is indemnification. Mm. You need to start learning that your model is traceable, so the data where you are reading that model, you know where that is coming from. So the indemnification also, because remember that the legal team in your organization needs to know where are you obtaining that information. Right. They need to be able, that information needs to be traceable. So all those concepts is what right now we are teaching to developers in order to say, guys, here are all the pieces of the puzzle. Please ensure that you are aware about all the consequences of picking a model. Please remember that maybe that model that you are using is not the right one because of cost or because of legal issues. So. These are new things to for developers are critical. Yeah, and for people who might have been sleeping under a rock, the granite models are actually something that was open sourced by IBM. Correct. With, with the help and the people, part of the Watson X family of yeah, stuff that's a good and point, things Rob. like that. Yeah. And I, I think this continues to help, I would say, you know, again, move things forward. And there's there's also like the Java side and Langchain yep. and other stuff that you guys are working with as well to make easy yep. as part of that, because there's also OpenShift AI, and which has been there a little bit longer than the Rel AI yep. stuff, but very similar for people who are in the Kubernetes space as well. And I think that opinionated stack is, is key, because like you said, a good on-ramp Podman AI, which I will check out now, you know, is, is one of those things that you, you need a starting point. Yep. And, and you need it because really, how do you get to productivity and how do you get to faster moving? That's, that's a great starting spot, but then, you know, 
based on backstage, you got Developer Hub as well, which yep. is, again, one of my favorite things. So, I mean, t tell us where, where is Developer Hub, Hub at these days, and what, you know, what are the communities been? I, I, you were, we were talking, you said it was packed. Great day zero, backstage day. Yeah. Give us a little insight into that. You, you that. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, we've seen uh, adoption of backstage kind of explode, right? So there's yeah. uh, how many thousand? Three thousand enterprises. Numbers, yeah, three thousand <laughs> enterprises adopting backstage. That's a and lot. Then, yeah, yeah, and twenty over twenty thousand developers already using Developer Hub. Developer Hub. Wow. Yeah. Yes. And remember that this was GA in January this I, year. I was. Yeah, that is well, impressive. So we are talking about less than a year. Over twenty thousand developers already using. Developer Talk hub, about so. validation on the project. Right, yeah, well, it really addresses a pain point yeah. for a right. lot of organizations. Yeah, that's a community so. saying, hi, thank you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and again, at Backstage Kong, we have some great customers. That was amazing. Uh, you have, there was some testimonials for American Airlines that they were like, there was a question from the audience, why are you doing this? Because it's saving us millions, millions, just to adopt the process that we are following took us long time, some time ago five years to implement. Now it's taking us seven months to implement the legal changes in American Airlines. He was at the stage and I was like, we can finish the event now. I was just going <laughs> to say, yeah. and that's and a wrap, folks. That's yeah, a wrap, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need to say nothing else. All yours, thank you so much. So yeah, but, but again, it's, it's the moment when you see the real adoption of customers. The real adoption and, and the real realization of ROI. I mean, that shoot, you can't argue with saying we're saving millions of dollars right. and we're a brand that people know all around the and world. He was like, guys, five years to seven months, that's the gap of using versus not using the product in order to implement the legislation changes. That's so tangible. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and just, just magnanimous. I want to I want to call out something that we haven't talked. Well, you touched on it a little bit earlier, Ignacio. But on security, I have some interesting data here in my notes. The only reason I'm staring at my computer: <laughs> seven hundred and forty-two percent annual increase in software supply yeah. chain yeah. attack. That is cray. Yeah. Uh, and very shocking. How, and I know you mentioned security. How are you helping on the security side? Because that's a massive potential risk. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And and that ties in really nicely to the backstage story as well because. As a developer, security is always kind of like an afterthought, you know, like, oh, maybe after there's been an audit or, you know. Well, that's what shift left's about, right? Yes, it's, exactly. It is your fault. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> but so, for developers to really bring that to the foreground, you need to, again, become expert in all these different security. Well, there's a lot of really cool projects, right, with the SIGSOR and Quark and, um, but yeah, again, cognitive overload to learn all those things. So with Backstage, it's really interesting because you can create templates. So if you want to start a new project, you can integrate in that template an opinionated pipeline that does all your different, creates the software bill of materials, signs it, makes sure it verifies it when, once you deploy, that it, the attestation, that it is from you, does the same with the container image, uh, you, you got your scanning built into that pipeline, um, and uh, yeah, so this whole kind of supply chain, you know, signing the different tasks of your pipeline, making sure that you were the one that actually built this uh, this artifact and, and this this container image. Um, so having that in in a pipeline already built in, so that when I create a new project, that's already there. I just need to commit my code, and it goes through that and stops the pipeline. Obviously, if there is an issue, I can go back quickly without waiting for X amount of months. Um, so yeah, so that's something that uh, we're And there is on. another tool, not only the signer, but yeah. also the analyzer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have a tool that analyzes how risky is the code, how risky are the dependencies that you are taking in order to build your app. So it gives you you can live with that, that is a bit of red, so having the capacity to analyze your pipeline is also critical. Not only having the capacity to sign that you are doing the right things, but where are those sources coming from? And that is the Red Hat Trusted Software Supply Chain that again was in early stages the last time we talked, now we have GA, 
And now I think that in the next months, we are going to see a bit of the same as we were seeing for Developer Hub, that is customers getting that, installing that, and starting to see the benefit of that. But again, we are starting on that. GA has been recently announced. We have the first customers coming. We will see much more about those in the upcoming months. And, and another thing that you have in preview that I, I think, again, has been a theme throughout all of today and this week in general is really the whole multi-cloud and with Connectivity Link. It kind of helped people understand what Connectivity Link's about and what that, how that helps people with this multi-cloud environments. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, I mean, because that's another piece of the puzzle, right? We're, I mean, we, we kind of started with Kubernetes and, and cloud environments. We we're going all into one environment because that's what we know. And uh, now we see a lot of organizations that either are going back on-prem with certain workloads, or they want to be on-prem, but they need you know, bursts of GPUs from, from the cloud, or they want to use different clouds together. Um, how do you do that, right? How do I mean, you do so that? There how are, do you connect all of that? Exactly, so I mean, there are different solutions, but they're mostly like, Deeper in the infrastructure, you have to be really network experts, you know, know all this stuff. Um, so what we're working on is kind of a higher level uh, interconnectivity uh, component where it's more for the developers to say like, hey, I want to run this here, I want to run that, we connect it together. Um, we can, it's kind of like API management, but beyond that, right? It's interconnectivity management because we can also do things that we could do in API management in terms of uh, rate limiting, making sure somebody has you know, authentication and authorization by, by, yeah. you know, by per different personas or by different components. And yeah, so that's the exciting next thing that, uh, yeah. that we're working on and you know. Yeah, we, are in, we have service interconnect that is the next frontier on that. Uh, still, again, early stages. We don't even have GA on that, but we are starting to collect the impact. And you mentioned a lot about the community that is collecting the feedback from the community about what they need. Uh, we are in that stage, and for sure in London we will see more about that. Well, that leads me to our, my final two questions. First of all, you're very good at always bringing us a little treat yes. and a little prop. <laughs> I'll hold this up for the camera I promise there. you that book in the last time we saw each other you in did, Paris. You did, yeah. you did, I know, no, which, which is great. Remind the audience what they can learn in here. Well, basically it's a book about the developer portal, backstage, and what you can solve with that. So I think that uh, developer portals has, are kind of the hub for being sure that you do things right uh, as a developer. And we call it, you remember that we talk about it, platform engineer concept. Mm -hmm. That is, who is the developer developer inside the company? Okay, who is bringing that infrastructure so the developer doesn't need to reinvent the wheel every time a, devel a new developer joins the company? Where do I start? How I yeah. can become productive? Yeah, yeah. What are the best practices? Where do I have the documentation? What are the right tools to use? All of that is what a developer portal is created for. So in the book, you can learn all about that. You can learn about the best practices. You can learn how to create the right documentation, how to use the right tools. That is the objective of the book. We are giving that for free in our website, in developers.redhat.com, but obviously we have a printed copy here that, by the way, we have the authors here, so we are signing the books. So yeah, it's a, it's a great way. You know that we are trying to explain to developers how they should do things, mm -hmm. and this is a great way to start with that. Awesome. Absolutely, all right, you kind of teased this out, and thank you for holding true on I your promise. Sir. You're very good, you got a short <laughs> memory that way. It's not lost on me. You kind of teased this out a second ago, but I'm going to ask it directly so we can use it for the sound bite to sizzle and tease London. What do you hope to be able to say when we're over there that you can't yet say today? Kevin, I'll start with you. Um, I, I think we're going to see more interesting things around AI because, yeah. well, that's <laughs> that's the what hot topic right now. Kevin. I know, crazy, Yeah, you're right? going out of the box <laughs> with that one. <laughs> But what I think that is going to change is right now, I think that in London we will be much better organized in the sense that right now, honestly, it's a bit mess. Yeah. In the sense that it's too much the complexity, there are too many options. I think that for London we will come with a much more clear, these are the right, not the right, but what we recommend as the models to use, this is for this use case, that is for that use case. We will have a much more 
a curated way to explain you should combine these different pieces for these topics, you should combine these other pieces, because right now we are in the face of that. We are in the face of even agreeing ourselves, okay, which are the right tools to use for what? Yeah. Okay. When do you use this granite model versus that granite model? And what is the difference for an insurance company? I think that right now we are still kind of painting all the pieces of the puzzle. In London, I will bring you much clearer puzzles with the pieces, much clearer for insurance. Take that. I strongly, I mean, you can reinvent the wheel yourself, but take that piece of the puzzle. But, but start with our puzzle pieces. Ex I, I, or yeah. I recommend you to start with the puzzle yeah. if you don't want to study one million different models in hugging face. Thought of that, our cognitive low conversation overwhelms me, especially at this altitude, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> wow, okay, Kevin Ignacio, time has gone by so fast. This was rad. Thank you, so fun awesome. as always, so educational. Can't wait to see you both again Absolutely. in London and have fun. And maybe we can do a puzzle together. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Bring you a puzzle next Yes, time. and that'll be our next, that'll be our next fun adventure. Rob, thank you so much, yes. as always. And thank all of you for tuning in to our fantastic three days of coverage here at KubeCon North America in Salt Lake City, Utah. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.